and uh, we had to wait a little bit longer in, in, in if we look back uh, because uh, some people started seeing some connections between implicit distributions and these density networks and so if we look at density networks so of course a neural network it transforms noise into an object right so we have a generator we define a generator so uh, now of course we can say that do we really need to uh, formulate some distribution in the end so that this density network gives us parameters of a density or maybe we can use it explicitly as a generator right and so in other words we'll ask okay uh, neural network give me an image in the end and so that's why and we can do that as we'll see in a second and that's why we call this implicit because implicitly we uh, model a distribution but actually we have no idea what kind of distribution it is because to be honest sometimes we don't care if we are interested in generating some objects so we don't care what kind of object it is right so all right so the idea behind the implicit uh, uh, models or implicit distributions is the following so we have a neural network a generator that transforms noise into an image or an object and it defines an implicit distribution so it means that uh, we do not assume any form of it again uh, and we can see it as a uh, as Dirac's delta so it means that for given uh, output of the neural network we have something like uh, infinite probability mass in this point okay so to see that it cannot be used to evaluate likelihood function so we can easily say we can easily see that by uh, thinking about logarithm of this uh, generator because it's a logarithm of uh, of Dirac's delta, which is ill-defined. We cannot calculate. This is log of minus infinity always. So this is uh, in uh, uh, saying in the programming terms, it's not a number. Okay. So it, we, have, we cannot use likelihood function. So what we can do, right? We need to use some kind of different approach. And for this different approach, we had to wait uh, 15 years, I think, after this density networks. Uh, and this is called Generative Adversarial Networks, or GAMs, for short. And what is the idea behind it? All right, so let's imagine that we have two actors. Oh, and there is a mistake. It's not image, but image, imagine. So let's imagine two actors. We have a fraud, uh, for instance, a painter, right? We have an expert, so that is able to ev evaluate, assess a picture. And of course, we have some real artists that we we have some pictures uh, from this person. Uh, but importantly, we have a fraud and an expert. And what do they want to do? So the fraud aims to copy the real artist and copy it in such a way that the, the, the art expert will be confused, okay? On the other hand, the expert tries to uh, figure out whether a picture is real or not. Okay, so it always gives an opinion. And we imagine, we can imagine some kind of uh, loop, feedback loop inside, uh, like for instance, the fraud uh, paints something, gives it to an expert, this expert says, bollocks, this is not true. And then fraud, okay, so uh, thinks, all right, I need to do better, okay. And so let's say that we first have such uh, an example. Let's say that the fraud generates something like this. And we clearly see that this is not, uh, not a good paint. And uh, the expert says clearly that this is fake. And then we provide a real uh, picture from uh, the real artist so that we want to verify whether the expert is good actually, right? So then uh, expert says, yes, this is Pablo, Picasso. Then of course we proceed and the fraud now behaves better and now expert is confused, all right? So this is the main idea behind, uh, behind, behind GANs. 
and how we can formulate it, all right? So now we, again, if we have this uh, three actors, let's say now also including the artist, but the artist is more like passive person. So we can uh, define it in the following way. So we have our generator or we have our fraud. So this is a neural network. It takes some noise. So it's something like you can imagine that an artist uh, thinks of something. Okay, I will paint it in this way and starts painting. We have an expert that gets either uh, a painting from uh, a painter, a fraud, or from an, a real artist. It's another neural network. And of course, we have real data. And uh, the idea is that we sample Z, so low dimensional uh, representation, then we generate uh, a new image and then we uh, discriminate whether this is real or fake. So now you can see actually that these two components, so they are actually this density network, but right now the output is a real painting, okay, real image. Right, but of course we need to ask ourselves what is the learning objective, right? Because we need to uh, we need, to, we need to learn somehow both these networks, right? Because uh, in this, uh, let's say real example, we had a, a human uh, painter, a fraud and human expert, but now we have neural networks that we, we need to learn, train somehow. We can do that by considering the following learning objective, okay? And uh, this learning objective is uh, for, um, states uh, the min-max problem. And the min-max problem is the following, that if we have real data, so we consider log of the discriminator. But if we have fake data, we consider log of one minus discriminator, discriminator for fake image, okay? And you can say, all right, all right. So hold on a second, uh, why this is so? Right? And the answer is very simple. Again, this resemblances the logarithm of the, lo the Bernoulli distribution, all right? Because if you think about it, you can think about it from the expert discriminator perspective. So whether I will get data that is zero, so real, uh, fake, sorry, or one that is real. And this is exactly like learning uh, Bernoulli uh, distribution, right? So now we have that this probability of ones is log of distribution. So this D of X model distribution uh, probability of X being real or we have uh, fake. So then we have log uh, one minus probability of uh, being real, right? One minus probability of being real. Uh, real uh, defines the probability of fake. So we see that these probabilities are here. Of course, now we, we actually want something more. So we want uh, this Ys now. So there are, of course, now images. So we want, we uh, include these expected values here and here. And of course, we include this generator, okay? because generator generate this fake, uh, fake uh, uh, images. And uh, this is the, the objective function. And also to worth, it's worth to uh, mention is that the discriminators, in it, since it uh, models probability, right? In this case of being fake or real, so it should and with the sigmoid function to, to mimic it properly, okay? And what is, the, what is also worth to mention is we want to minimize with respect to the generator, right? And uh, why? Because of course we have this uh, minus here, so it must be the minimum. Uh, and uh, we want to maximize with respect to discriminator because it's equivalent to maxim maximizing Lock likelihood function. Lock likelihood, of course, uh, in, you know, it's it's not real lock likelihood, but it resembles uh, uh, lock likelihood. Right. 
So now what is the generative process of, of this, uh, of GANs? It's of course very simple. Once we trained everything, once we, we have all, uh, all models, uh, so, we, uh, so we can just simply sample Z from the prior and then we can generate a new image. The learning objective also called adversarial loss because after this paper, there are a lot of other papers uh, talking about this adversarial. So, you know, one is adversary to the other. Uh, so this is the simplest uh, possible adversarial loss. So we just simply uh, learn it in two stages. So first we generate fake images and minimize with respect to discriminate uh, generator. And then we take real images uh, and these fake images and we maximize with respect to discriminator, okay? So here is mistake. We should take both real and fake images. All right, a bit of code to see that actually this is uh, very easy to implement. Here I provide only uh, the, the model, not the training loop, of course, but we'll comment on that. And also please go through this uh, by yourself to see all details. But in general, add, I see already a mistake. It shouldn't be linear VA, it should be GAN. Sorry for that. Um, but of course, when we initialize GAN, so we need uh, layers for generator, in this case, two layers with one hidden layer, with one hidden layer of hidden units, 300 hidden units. And for discriminator, in this case, also two layers. And please uh, pay attention to output uh, number of output uh, features. So in the case of generator, if the, it is the size of the image. And uh, in, in, for the discriminator, this is, the, now, this is only one value, right? So this is the probability you, you want to model. We can define two functions, one for generating. So we just start from some noise. We generate, we return it. Then we can uh, we can discriminate. So again, we take some X, we return sigmoid. So the generative loss is just torch, uh, sorry, it's logarithm of one minus discriminator for a generator here again, should be M, not M. -M. And uh, discriminative loss is just uh, log D real plus log one minus D gen. Uh, and we take minus because remember, if we minimize some, if we maximize something, we need to take minus sign. And then we have forward of this model. So it returns, we can generate, uh, we need to generate uh, fake images. We, we put in uh, to the discriminate, the discriminator, we put in the real and generated images. And that's why we have this component for real and generate, generated images. And this is what we return, okay? So now, finally, we can use, for instance, two optimizers, one for uh, the real and one for uh, degenerated. Oh, sorry, it's actually a mistake. One for the real and the gene and one for generator only. Uh, sorry, another mistake. Uh, and we can just run one after the other, okay? So we need to, for instance, minimize with respect to generator and then minimize with respect to negative loss for the discriminator altogether. So in fact, this is not a complicated uh, model or code. Here is a paper from 2016, so in general, Gen uh, GANs uh, were really successful for a couple of years, at least to 2018, because people were able to generate high quality uh, images uh, with relatively simple models. Uh, then it turned out that there, there are a lot of problems, but still, I think in terms of you know coherency and how these images look like, so GANs are are really really good. If you look at these two uh, images, 
representing CIFAR-10 uh, real data and samples. If you look at them at the first glance, you can say the difference. And this is really like the same. Uh, of course, then if you look uh, on the right, so you see that, well, this is dog, but with an eye in the middle of the forehead or something like that. So it's hard to say this is something like, uh, I don't know what even. So you see that there is something strange going on, but at least they are really, really sharp images, okay? So this is taken from a paper uh, from 2016. So you see that this is uh, remarkable, especially that uh, this was four years ago. Right, so what are advantages? So definitely we have nonlinear transformations and we have very, very easy uh, procedure for generating. So this is the same as for the density networks. So you see also that they are similar. We have learnable laws. We allow implicit models, so we don't need to uh, define anything in advance and it works in high dimensional problems. So this is really good. The problem is that we don't have exact likelihood, but we can deal with that, let's say. We have unstable training. Unfortunately, there is a problem with uh, mean max uh, optimization problems. It's simply unstable. So we need to use resilient of different tricks. Uh, there is also, it turned out that there is something which is called a missing mode problem. So it, it turned out that actually guns don't cover the whole space. Uh, what does it mean? It means that, for instance, when they they looked at generated images, they, they were super happy, but then the, someone asked a question, hey, does it generate from all classes? So, for instance, in the MNIST, in these handwritten digits, it turned out that, for instance, uh, it doesn't generate, let's say, on twos. So they, they, they generate maybe even at all. So they missed one mode, one component, right? Uh, and this is a big issue in, uh, in GANs. Uh, and there's also no clear way for quantitative assessment. So it's rather hard to compare two GANs. These days we have two such metrics. So there is this uh, fit score and there's inception score. If you are interested in that, please uh, Google them. Uh, but still they are, I would say rather heuristics. Uh, uh, then you know, uh, then 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 something like very reliable uh, quantities, like for instance, likelihood function. All right. As I said, so we can now, of course, with adversarial laws, we have more flexibility. We can start thinking what could be actually better. So there is this uh, one of the. The, 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 let's say next generation of uh, GANs, Wasserstein GANs. Uh, so they, they propose to use different uh, loss function rather than mimicking Bernoulli distribution. They said that we can actually even use different metric and they propose to use earth mover distance. Okay. All right, what does it mean? So it means that we have, let's, let's look at what is inside this min max. So we, again, we consider real images, we consider a fake images, but now we actually have discriminator. So we calculate expected value with respect to uh, this X of discriminator and then of discriminator for fake images, only the minus sign is here. So this looks a little bit surprising. So it, there must be some hack. Uh, and it turns out that the thing that must be fulfilled here is that the discriminator must be one Lipschitz function, okay? All right, so this is some mathematical term. A Lipschitz function means that if you take two uh, objects and you calculate difference between or distance between them using some metric, and then you uh, transform these objects and you consider uh, distance uh, in this uh, function space so that after transforming it, this, this, the original distance should be lower or equal 
some a constant k times difference in the function space. This is the Lipschitz function, k Lipschitz function. So this one Lipschitz function means that uh, this k factor is equal one, okay? Uh, this is mathematical term, so please maybe also look it up to fully understand it, how to implement it in practice. It turned out that it's actually simple. So we need to clip weights of the discriminator. So you just need to apply to all your uh, layers, either linear or convolutional or whatever. So you need to clip weights to some value C and C is uh, small like 0 0.1 or 0 0.01, okay? So we need to initialize them to be really small. You apply back propagation, you update all uh, weights and then bam, you clip them all. And it stabilizes uh, training and it's, uh, it's, it turns out to work better. But the problem of uh, like missing mode and so on, it remains, okay? So uh, they, they indicated that, you know, we can use different adversarial laws, but still to generate properly from that, it's an upper question. And it was in 2017. All right, so this is the, the, the lecture about uh, uh, implicit models. So especially GANs, uh, generative autoencoders, uh, pardon, generative uh, uh, adversarial networks, sorry. Uh, so this is a different class of models, right? Personally, I am not uh, into these models because they don't, do not provide likelihood function. And uh, I believe that actually the likelihood function is a very good quantity to measure and to, and to have to also combine. Uh, when you have likelihood based model, you can easily combine it with other uh, probabilistic models. So you can uh, treat them as building blocks, right? Here you can do that because it's implicit model. Uh, nevertheless, this is very, very interesting uh, class of models. They are easy to implement. They are hard to train, but eventually if you, if you train them so they can give you really high quality uh, images, for instance, um, you can also play with them. There is a beautiful paper cycle gun that you can change, I don't know, one uh, autumn to spring and, and so on. So you can a uh, horse to zebra and, and all this stuff. It's really fun. Uh, and also if you have, if you want to implement some uh, app on your phone with, uh, with some generative stuff inside, I think that guns are a good choice for it because they are rather light. You don't need to have so deep models and you can get really remarkable results. So honestly, I would start with this one probably. Uh, so yeah, so and again, very, very fascinating topic. And uh, in lecture 10, we will uh, close this uh, subgroup of lectures on generative modeling with autoregressive models and uh, flow-based models. Thank you very much.